May I invite the second oral presentation for this session in medicine. Uh, the topic is a retrospective comparative study on the outcomes of low dose and high dose cyclophosphamide regime in the management of class 3 and 4 lupus nephritis in Sri Lanka. The paper is by Vijayaratna DR, Atukodala I, Gunavardhana NS, Vijayasundara DA, Gunaratna K, Nanalar RD, and the paper will be presented by Vijayaratna DR. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, the study I am presenting is a retrospective comparative study on outcomes of a low and high dose cyclophosphamide regimen in class 3 and 4 lupus nephritis in Sri Lanka. The prevalence, severity and outcomes of lupus nephritis differ according to ethnicity, but most evidence for management comes from Caucasian populations. Steroids and cyclophosphamide are standard induction therapy in aggressive lupus nephritis. Initial evidence for cyclophosphamide was derived from multiple NIH trials which used a prolonged course of high-dose IV cyclophosphamide pulses. The Eurolupus trial compared high and low-dose IV cyclophosphamide as remission-inducing therapy in proliferative lupus nephritis. The study showed no difference in renal outcomes with a trend towards fewer adverse effects in the low-dose group. So because of this, this low-dose regimen has been adopted worldwide as a standard therapy for proliferative lupus nephritis. And in our unit, we have been using low-dose cyclophosphamide as standard of care since 2013. However, as the Eurolupus trial was conducted in a European population, there is concern that low-dose cyclophosphamide may not be as efficacious as in those of other ethnicities. So the objective of our study was to compare the outcomes of low and high dose cyclophosphamide regimens in Sri Lankan patients with class 3 and 4 lupus nephritis. This was a single center retrospective comparative study conducted in the University Medical Unit of the National Hospital of Sri Lanka. Our patients were 14 years and above with biopsy proven class 3 or 4 lupus nephritis, baseline protein urea of 500 mg or above in 24 hours, standard steroid induction and a minimum follow-up of six months. They were classified into treatment groups according to the initial course of cyclophosphamide they received. Low dose was a urolupus regime of six two-weekly doses of 500 mg IV and high dose was six monthly pulses given IV followed by quarterly pulses for up to two years with a starting dose of 0.5 grams per square meter body surface area. The primary outcome was treatment failure defined as absence of primary response to treatment within six months. This could be either persistent renal impairment at six months or persistent nephrotic range proteinuria at six months. And the secondary outcome was remission, either complete or partial remission defined as given on the slide. Sample size was calculated using standard techniques and sampling method was convenient sampling. Data was collected retrospectively from medical records and by interview. These are the baseline uh, demographic data and clinical features, which were broadly similar between the two groups. And importantly, I'm sorry, the circles have uh, moved slightly. I'd like to highlight that 60 to 65% in both groups had nephrotic syndrome or nephrotic range proteinuria, indicating that they had clinically severe disease. Considering the histological activity, the low dose group had significantly higher disease activity than the high dose group, with all but one patient having class 4 lupus nephritis, a higher activity index overall, and a trend towards more crescents. If we look at the treatment received, the high dose group had a higher unit dose of cyclophosphamide, a higher number of pulses, and a higher total dose, as expected, but still this dose was lower than that received by the high dose group in the Eurolupus trial. Considering the outcomes, 20% uh, had treatment failure in the high dose group compared to 29% in the low dose group, but this dis difference was not statistically significant. And there were similar rates of remission seen in both groups as well. There was no difference in significant side effects. So this study suggests that low and high dose cyclophosphamide show similar efficacy in terms of avoiding treatment failure in a Sri Lankan population with class 3 and 4 lupus nephritis. And this is similar to data from other studies involving black, Hispanic and Chinese patients. 
Now, how relevant is this in an era when we are shifting from cyclophosphamide based regimens to less toxic treatments? So part of our interest is in understanding the ethnic and genetic diversity of lupus nephritis. And we largely depend on studies done in Caucasian patients to guide our management. So it is reassuring that at least where response to cyclophosphamide is concerned, we seem to have similar outcomes. The main strength of our study is that our patients had highly active disease and we know that low dose cyclophosphamide was effective in this group as well. The limitations are that it is retrospective, it compared two treatment cohorts from temporarily discrete periods of time and there was a relatively lower dose of cyclophosphamide in the high dose group. In conclusion, our study suggests that low dose is as effective as high dose cyclophosphamide in the treatment of class 3 and 4 lupus nephritis in our population and we recommend further multicenter, cross-sectional and prospective studies within our local setting so we can better understand our patient cohort and how to treat them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, now the paper is open for discussion. Uh, you have three minutes. So madam, this was a retrospective study and uh, the patients in the high dose group had received treatment from 2000 to 2013 and the low dose group was from 2013 onwards when our protocol changed. How long did you follow, it, follow them up for the two groups? So the minimum follow up period was six months uh, because our primary outcome was defined at six months absence of treatment failure. But uh, uh, clearly, the, the high dose group had a much longer follow up period than the low dose group. So basically, yeah, because uh, the, the low dose group finished after six months of therapy, uh, whereas the high dose group continued for two years. Yes, yeah. the, um, the low dose, so, so now this, the Eurolupus trial itself, which compared high dose and low dose, used the same outcome measures that we used yeah. that is, absence of response at six months despite the fact that the high dose regimen goes on for much longer than that. The low dose regimen is six two weekly pulses, so it's finished by three months. So I just wonder whether we should follow up the low dose group also mm -hmm. for the same period. Yes. And uh, have, the, have the Euro, uh, Euro, Euro study done that? So they, ha they have done a long term follow up study of 10 years and even after 10 years they found that there were similar outcomes between the two groups. So we would also like to prospectively follow up this cohort that we have identified and see whether the outcomes are also similar. But you did see a trend towards less efficacy in the, in the lotus group? Uh, it does look a bit like that, sir, but the histological activity was higher in the low dose group. Right. And I think that may be because we are now using mycophenolate mofetil for less active right. disease. So we may be actually selecting out the patients who have more active disease to give them the cyclophosphamide. Right. And that may be why it seems that they have lower response. And the other argument that they have given is the fact that there is less toxicity. Yes, sir. But in your case, there is no risk of... No Again, risk. sir, this is a retrospective study, so it's difficult to comment on the toxicity. There may have been deaths that we haven't identified because the patients are no longer within our cohort. And also um, gonadotoxicity. So our cohort is quite young still. Even in the high-dose group, the median age was 35 years when we were collecting the data. So it may be that we uh, still have to wait to see whether they are going to develop premature ovarian failure or not. Um, based on these results now, your, the current treatment, are you all giving the low dose now to your patients? Madam, we have been giving low dose since 2013 and uh, the, the trigger for this study was actually we thought that we might be, our, our patients might not be responding as well to this low dose regime. But it seems that we do have a reasonably good response. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.